Hello and welcome back to the Double Swing. I am still in uh, the improvised studio room that is <laughs> all that remains of my prior abode. Uh, we'll soon be transitioning over. I think all the next videos that come out after this week will be recorded in the new setup, but for now we're still here with a little bit of an echo. Joining me to preview Copenhagen Major EU RMR A is Yumi as always, uh, but first before we dive into that, let's quickly recap Katowice. Technically not finished, the grand final is yet to be played, and both of us have a pick in that grand final. But all in all, it's been a pretty tragic effort. Um, as you all know, to get points, you need a minimum of top four for an underdog pick, and a final for a favourite. And overall, it's been horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. Vitality, Na'Vi out in groups, that's my favourites, decimated. Heroic, close, but no cigar. I think fairly admirable performance. And then on Yumi's side of things, I mean, yeah, you've got FaZe. FaZe is good. Can't complain. But G2, not quite good enough. And C9 and Ents, also not quite good enough. It's a solid picks, but it's really, yeah, it's been a, a tale of not quite good enough, this event. Yeah, I, had to, I had two quarterfinalists, though. I'll have, I'll have that on record. I, I won, like, <laughs> 0 0.1 points, at least, for those. You, you want a 0 0.1 for those? Okay, okay, I'll, I'll put it, it I'll might put make it a difference. Board. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you know, sometimes, sometimes we're struggling down at the bottom, and it's a fight to see who cannot be at the bottom you know the viewers just keep winning so what can we do yeah the viewers have it on easy mode so maybe we should just focus on beating each other because mm. uh so far this season yeah we're already losing so <laughs> it'd be good to uh to focus on ourselves but let's start this the copenhagen majors coming up the process for majors it feels like it gets longer every year it doesn't it just feels that way it just got longer once or a little while ago and now we're all fixated on it for months and months at a time I'm looking at this this group of teams. I'm thinking the, t the top tier is getting a bit deeper. There are more and more teams where I'm thinking, you know, you guys you guys are actually going to show me something this year, right? It's not it's not quite as bad as it was last year when it was anyone can lose to anyone. So it's 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 getting positive. I think we're going to soon see a, a much more stable top end to the scene with some really elite teams playing good Counter Strike. I think that's a positive uh, sign of things to come. Yeah, I think the weird part about modern day Counter Strike is, I think there's been some criticism levied that teams are weaker than they were in like previous eras of Counter Strike. You know, whether we're looking back at like the early days of Counter Strike Global Offensive, or we're looking at like the Astralis era, or you know, Liquid as a contender. You know, we're, when we're looking at these teams that are title contenders and the style of play that they use, it does feel like everybody we've we've gone through so many different variations of play styles that everybody does feel like they can play every play style it's just about like their tendencies to go for a more aggressive play it's it's more about like distribution on a pie chart of how many aggressive rounds do you want how many defensive rounds do you want what kind of crazy mid-round call do you want to do some one time um so right now it's it's weird because i don't think we're actually in a weak era of counter-strike but it does. But there are so many teams that are good at being dynamic, unlike previous eras that we've had to look at. That it is very hard to call sometimes, and, and the, the further that tier two scene is pushed to like bite at the heels of, of tier one, yeah, it, it throws everything kind of into chaos when we get into uh, events like this, where there's you know open qualifications and some of those teams that are outside of like these partnership circuits can suddenly fight the these top level teams especially some of them that will be coming off of a big lan event um like like katavitz you know some of them might come in a little bit not jaded i think but maybe a bit sort of worn down by the fact they've just been in front of a crowd and now they're back in a studio and they they have to sort of re-engage themselves for the for the grandiose of the moment you know this the rmrs are very fun for this reason as well because you get some very weird storylines kind of emerging yeah that's more the issue it's it's never really bad counter-strike that's been played it's more that the narratives can't be as compelling and the one thing i did think a lot of people felt was the mid part of last year especially it's like the tier one ceiling hasn't moved up to match the mm. tier two floors rise like a lot of teams have understood that through demo study becoming more and more professional as they use the money coming to the scene in sort of a more productive way especially with the expansion of sticker money that you can actually dedicate more of your time to this do it properly even if you aren't one of the big names and yeah you end up with teams just upsetting everyone and going on runs so hopefully we can see a little more of an established top five just for the narratives 
this year. I, I, I don't mind if it's a bloodbath outside of like the top few teams. I just want to see a little more of an established uh, figurehead at the top of the scene. But on that note, you've got the first pick. And I think you've picked a team that we all expect and hope will be at the top for a long time. Yeah, this is, I mean, uh, it feels very simple. I picked them for Katowice. I picked them here again. I went with FaZe as my favorites moving in first. Um, they're in the finals of Katowice. They've been playing great so far. They've pretty much dominated most of their series. And they're getting crazy amounts of impact out of the, the players you want to see have impact. You know, Frozen is finding uh, finding moments. Rops is finding moments. Rain has looked so very very good in the in the playoffs as he typically does mm -hmm. you know for for me this phase team has so much depth especially when rain is having you know good performances that they're just an incredibly hard team to beat like there is basically no weakness at that point because yeah carrigan doesn't really sometimes put up the numbers but he'll he'll be in your face he'll be yelling at you the entire time he'll, he'll get the crowd on his side regardless of where he is because he's just such a good performer and such a good showman and will also make the right call at the right moment in these types of games. Like this, this face team, I think just looks, it just looks solid at the moment. I, I don't really have much to fault outside of maybe some occasional calls that go askew, but no, no caller can ever get the perfect read every time. Yeah, you're entirely right that there's not much to criticize right now. We we did think, oh, perhaps the Frozen move's taking a little bit of time to embed itself. It didn't look perfectly smooth. But yeah, this event has proven that, yeah, it took them a tiny bit of time to figure it out. But they're back to full swing. This has been a pretty pretty solid showing. They've only dropped one series. That's obviously Two-Spirit, who they are now going to be playing again. I think they got a better chance this time around. I think they kind of got caught off guard by especially Spirit's nuke like play. That was not something I think anyone had really on the bingo card is phase getting slaughtered on their own pick especially on a map like nuke which is fairly complex mm -hmm. requires a lot of attention to detail we weren't expecting spirit to be that prepared on that map as well but hey in the rematch we'll see how they can do i was expecting nuke to make it through the veto as well uh, but at this event they should be heavy favorites to come out i mean as a couple teams you'd say should give them a good match but if they especially if they're playing like best of threes there's no one who should really be favored to beat them so they'll make it out almost without a doubt i think that's pretty comfortable to say i i really wish though uh do you have anything to add on phase before i uh, transition I, 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 was just, I, I was basically gonna say like phase do have a tendency though to come into these rmr events a little cold you know mm. they they have been prone to start off like one and two and then have to make it through either like last chance or make it through as like the final team to scrounge out uh into the top eight so yeah. that that is the the only real genuine concern i have about this face team is that yeah they'll go from katavitz into an rmr and given that history that i know that already exists yeah you know maybe, maybe i'm a little fearful that one of one or two of their opening games that should be favorable for them might just you know be pulled over them yeah those sort of slow starts i mean again that's why i said once you get to the best of three phase no one's really that worried Mm -hmm. sure there could be a situation where they're to beat like a g2 in a best of three to go through if both of them have that you know sort of slower start get upset on some best of ones not manage their vetoes properly i've seen that happen enough times in these sorts of rmrs or swiss systems in general but i'm not too concerned i would be like pretty yeah i think we can both be pretty confident you're getting some points here yeah, yeah i'm confident be, uh, but it's one of those where, like, you know, if it does happen, I'm not too surprised, weirdly. Yeah, just be I'm a little mad. <laughs> just disappointed, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I get it. I get it entirely. And I, honestly, I wish I could be as confident in either of my favorite picks. Uh, but I'm going to start with the first one who are... Oh, it's hard to tell which one's shakier right now. Uh, I'm taking Na'Vi. Now, they are looking better than they did towards the end of last year, obviously, where it was horrendous and i was expecting them to actually make it out of the groups at katowice uh, they did end up falling to falcons who <clears throat> honestly i think that falcons game was the best game falcons played at this event against uh against navi in groups yeah it was a really impressive showing aside from that yeah no real big scalps they did take a map off of spirit one of the few teams you have i think one of the only teams you have at this event so far and which is you know, an achievement in of itself i guess if you think about how uh how present spirit is in everyone's mind and how dominant they seem. That's actually an achievement in and of itself. But yeah, close wins against uh, teams like Apex, Eternal Fire, 
does leave you with some doubts about the RMR, but they are winning more than they're losing. They look pretty sharp. Sure, they got knocked out by Falcons, but I still think the talent on display is still firing off to a good enough level to get them through this one. And I trust Alexi B to have his team well prepped and well drilled. So not the, as confident as I'd like to be picking my first favorite, but I'm still feeling like it's hard to call them anything but the number two team in this group. I mean, a big positive for them is that they placed higher than Vitality at Katowice. And, you know, <laughs> I'd, I'd still say Vitality are one of the favorites for the major. They're still one of like the proper title contenders in my yeah. eyes. So if, if you're ever going to have doubts and, you know, some fr from the good stuff that I've seen from Na'Vi, the fact that Imma seems to be having, you know, finding a bit more comfort in, in his positions or, or in, I guess, in the communications on the team, mm -hmm. Bit seems to have kind of re-engaged as well on this roster. Um, that and they've got, God, for some reason I always confuse him, Wonderful, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, the, the fact that they've got three players that you can kind of look to as as pretty you know players that can maybe take over in a, a half i don't actually think any of them have the capacity to, to fully take over a game unfortunately um and you've got a pretty consistent piece in jl alongside it alexi not a bad fragging in game leader as well you know i, I think this navi team does have legs and i do think yeah they're 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 not a team i would ever expect to win the major but they're a team that i think will very comfortably get out of the group because i I just think they play a very uh, sort of uniform style, and they're not a team that I think a lot of these other teams in the group are going to be prepping for. I think the teams that are going to be prepped for are Vitality, FaZe, there may, may be Falcons and Spirit. Um, oh wait, no, sorry, I'm looking at the I'm looking at Catabees for some reason. Um, maybe Falcons, <laughs> um, and uh, you know I maybe even expect like Eternal Fire and Virtus Pro to be the teams that people are looking at predominantly. Okay. Navi are Navi are such a oddball team I think to to anti strat or prep for, I think. Just the, the it feels like every time I watch them someone's in a different spot or doing a different thing in like the opening 2 to 3 gun rounds. So I like that about them though. You know, they're kind of sporadic. They're a little different yeah. sometimes, a little wacky. Yeah, they're, they're a little harder to predict and so I feel like it would add some element of inconsistency. I must say, they do feel like a team whose problem isn't their floor. It's more their ceiling and how often they can actually reach it. You know, how often they can actually get everyone firing on all cylinders. Because it hasn't been the case that they've had it happen a whole lot. So a little, a little bit of reassurance, I think, in that discussion for Na'Vi pickers and Na'Vi fans alike. But still not the most promising situation. Yumi, your second pick of the episode. Who are you taking? So, uh, this will not come to the surprise of many. Um, let me see, looking through the team list, FaZe, Na'Vi, Virtus Pro. Okay, I'm going to pick those guys, because I, I love Virtus Pro. Um, uh, a team that I've loved following, even in their journey through 2023, where they're like weirdly Norbert's out. But then Norbert, actually, you come back. You, you, we want you to work on some stuff. We, we're going to bring you back if you work on that stuff. Norbert phoned up, said, hey, I did, I, I've done the homework, Jame. And he came back and he's done exactly what seems to be of asked of him. Like, I, I love watching Flit, Norbert, and Fame just kind of work areas of the map. Um, let alone Jame, like, clutching, hitting just ridiculous AWP shots, even though he never really puts himself in position to have those shining moments until very late in rounds or, or when he's saving. Um, yeah, this, this team, I think, is just, like, incredibly undervalued. To, to tier one Counter Strike, and they didn't really do too well at Katowice. They had a bit of a shock, I think, but they're gonna they're gonna blow out some teams at this RMR, and they'll still finish three and two, but they'll make it through. Yeah, Virtus Pro are a team where, as much as I've kind of joked to her, Banana Cup champions, all this sort of thing, and we saw at Katowice, ooh, how true that probably is. This is a banana cup in terms of the level of opposition. Like this is realistically the people they've been feeding on for the last uh, four or five months to get this number four ranking in the world. Uh, if you look at the list of teams, I'm sure they've even played half of them in these cups they've won. So I think Virtus Pro is a great pick here. They're not a great pick, I think, for like a main event, a big event. They've certainly looked shaky at those. Like, sure, the pieces work the map and these guys are all, you think they're all solid, but who's your real star rifler when Flit's not showing his full form? Like, can guys like Fame and Mir do a whole lot of much. Like, I know their numbers look good, but they, can they do it in the real big matches? Because they haven't done it particularly often. 
Yeah, I will say Mir has been very un kind of underwhelming. Like he's playing a lot of very late round positions, and you know he's, I'm seeing him sort of lurking elbow on ancient, and you know trying to make weird. He doesn't actually even try to make plays. I don't think is is the weird part for me. And Mir was such a like a loose cannon type of player at one point or another in his career that I just find it so odd to see him so contained. It looks like it feels like he's caged. And everybody else gets to have fun. Jame is just like control rooming from the back, and Mir is just holding a spot for the entire round, ev almost every time, until they're on eco or saving, and then he's he does stuff, or or they're in like a two v two post plant, and he's like, oh, I have to move now. Um, yeah, I think Mir is the weak link for me on this Virtus mm. Pro roster, but he's still like on paper in terms of like raw mechanics, supposed to be better than Norbert, and yes, Nor yes. and Norbert is kind of weirdly the third best rifler on this team when Mir is, you know, in Mir's current form. But that's kind of like, that's good for Virtus Pro. You know, that, that just elevates their floor. And if all Mir needs to do is activate like 5-10% more and have, have that output, and then suddenly this team basically has no weakness. So, yeah, they're just, they're just a fun team to watch. People hate the way they play, and that's why they're so undervalued. <laughs> Everybody yeah. sleeps on Jame. People always do, and Jame... Uh, he will get his flowers. Like as time goes by, slowly more and more people become massive fans. As more and more people, I think, understand the game because James has found a really unique way to approach it, a way to unravel teams, a way to take map control and to just squeeze life out of rounds. Uh, so I think he's a bit of a grappling like submission specialist. Anyway, um, more importantly, I'm just, I'm just a as analogy aside, I think yes, you've made in this case the right pick for the right event more than anything else. That's exactly it. I wish again I could say that because I've picked another team who are prone to the slow start, prone to the upset, um, but who are just objectively too good to not get picked. And I've taken G2. Now, G2 at Katowice, it looked like the Monacy show until they needed to get into quarterfinals. Then Nico absolutely dominated that series. And then they got to the, the actual playoff game and everything kind of fell flat. I was kind of disappointed by, at various points, every single player on the team. Like I thought there were times where Hooksy wasn't calling a great game and he was, oh my god, so awful mechanically. And it's not even like we're talking about his mouse moving to the crosshairs on people's heads, like stuff like that. He will, He just doesn't know how to go around a corner. And that's becoming more and more of an issue um hunter just doesn't look comfortable right now i think he he, was, he had his moments i think on the stage game but aside from that really not good uh nexa in the wins there were times where his looks looked effective like he looked like his role made sense but for the most part he's just not an upgrade to, to jks so you're looking at this roster a bit puzzled as to why they've They've arranged themselves this way. When I heard the Nexus signing was happening, I thought it was an IGL change, but no. We end up in this situation. I want this team to succeed. I think at this event, they are going to succeed. They've got enough time like, to recover from Katowice, to not have too much of that first day like, kind of blues, I don't think. they just got to get in there and play some hype CS. You know, play a bit more confident. Maybe not try to outthink teams because they're not very good at it. Just try to get Nico and Monacy to carry you to Ws. I think that's the best way for them to approach it. But I think they are a risky team to pick. I just can't bring myself to pick anyone else from the favorite tier. Yeah, yeah. I thought, you know, the one of the team that we kind of did skip out on that could have maybe made it into the favorites was Falcons. You know, they make it into playoffs, kind of eats. Yeah, it looked a little bit like basically... Yeah, who did they play, though? Yeah, they played Donk and Spirit. Yeah, but I mean, and... to get to that point, like... Yeah, it's not the most convincing series of games, especially when you had to watch them at Blast Premier Spring groups. I think like, Ents I... had a more legitimate run in a sense than yeah than Falcons did, which feels yeah. a bit weird. But yeah, <laughs> the thing is, like some Pius, still a top level player. Martin actually looked great when they were on the stage. Um, you know, Magus had had some great moments. Weirdly, Boros is actually a, a player that I thought would struggle more to find impact on falcons but actually was having some pretty solid rounds like just kind of mechanically he's the highest um, rate player for the event actually i was just looking up the numbers yesterday it's uh i was surprised because you thought you've said it like a couple times there on the stage look great it's actually shocking how weak madden and some Pice's numbers are 
prior to the stage games like they really mm. weren't performing they were really struggling so i think there has been some stuff slowly locking into place and making sense for players as the as this event's gone on because well, i think i think snappy did an interview where he was saying like uh well like some people forgot calls in some of the earlier games what which the hell? i have to i have to believe like the only person that i know that's played un like really unstructured cs for most of their career is boros so that's the only person I could I can sort of infer that that person you know would have made forgotten a call, but I don't know you know that's that's reading between the lines. He does seem like yeah. most of his kills from from what I've watched are in like the more hectic, you know things have already broken down outside of the default rounds where they're just pulling together kills, and that's where Boris can be quite an, quite an explosive player. Yeah. So, um. Yeah, weird to see them do so well, but they are of like you saw them get super tilted playing against Spirit, which I think Ooh, yeah. a lot of teams do because they're just like one again they're shit pushed in by a seventeen year old who's first time being on a stage, <laughs> uh, or or being at at a Catavites for that matter. Um, but then also you know it just felt like a lot quite a few uh, quite a few rounds were lost in kind of unnecessary ways. Um, so yeah, I think there's there's a lot of there's a lot of development. I'm sure they'd say that themselves, but they're the only team we skip over and could have I think legitimized a, a favorites pick because I think it's Eternal, Eternal Fire are in in our favorites categorically just based off rankings, yeah. but they're also not a team that are kind of compelling enough. Like I I actually think Eternal Fire will make it through this group or Me make too. it through Me the too, yeah. make it through the RMR, but it's kind of hard to put them as a favorite. Like it's just it's not wired. <laughs> Right at the moment, <laughs> like nobody's had that same chance. No, not neither Bet Boomer Nine Pandas. So, no, it's a bit rough when you get outside of these teams, and yeah, it's going to be interesting to see who actually joins them because out of the remaining like set of teams we're picking for underdogs and the favorites we didn't choose, those upper half teams, there's actually quite a few like big matchups and teams you really can't pick between. So it's going to be interesting. Firstly, for the underdog picks as well. But for the bigger names in the underdog section, yeah, let's see if they can make it out. So let's start with your first underdog pick on that actual topic. Who have you gone with? I've chosen the best underdog there is within this RMR. The only, actually, no, eh, arguable. It's tied. You know, I think you've got a good one as well. I've gone with Amcal. I've chosen the amalgamation of players coming out of the old, entro uh, the entropic of old and their most consistent rifle out of one win. And then you've got Icy. You know, I don't, you know, Icy is a bit more of an oddball for me. But, you know, Crad, Forrester, Travis is like, a, to me, is a great rifling core. Crad, very aggressive. Forrester can be as well, um, but can also a little sh kind of shy away in certain moments. And, you know, I think is a little bit more... Um, uh, can actually have a bit more of a passive style to his game. And then you actually have Travis as just like a rock. This guy is, in my opinion, the crims of Russian like tier 2 Counter-Strike. And maybe he's been stuck there a little too long, but a very consistent rifler and makes a lot of very good decisions in late round moments. So between those three, the, you, you kind of have super aggro, somewhere in the middle, and passive. And, you know, that kind of claws out quite a lot of the game plan when things break down because i'm color they're quite a scrappy team in the games i've watched they are quite yeah. they're kind of all over the place and it's it's weird because i'd be fine with that if icy to me was like a more aggressive opera because it almost feels like icy is so detached from everything all the time but then occasionally you'll get this game where you know he's in 2v4s and he's hitting he's killing everybody and you know that's where he can maybe shine as this late round opera, which, yeah, I don't, I don't know that I like that, and that's maybe the only criticism I have of this team. But they've been, they've been kind of on the grind the the past past month since they established this roster. They really have been. They didn't make it through the Chengdu qualifier, unfortunately, but they they have made it here, and they've looked really impressive in a lot of the games I've watched. Um, not so much tactically, of course, but in terms of just their ability to make rounds happen, it's been great. So. I would like to add Amcal as an underdog pick. You stole them, uh, so I'm kind of annoyed. I do think Icy's a legit talent, and that's really cool. We've seen actually a few uh, just 
Kazakhstan or Kazakhstani Orpers, like young guys just coming out, like Khan or Naimiga, the team who did uh, actually defeat Amcal in Chengdu, well, the Chengdu qualifier. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's also looking very tidy. So more CIS talent on the rise, just from a slightly less expected location. Um, and yeah, Amcal, I think they've got a good chance to make a run here, as do, as do most of the underdog picks that are available. Just based on the individuals, they've really done a great job recruiting. As you said, that's a, a rifle core most teams in Tier 2 would be envious of, and one that's been productive for a long time. Like that's a, one of the great advantages. There's no mystery to it. There's no, oh, will they, if, but no, no. This group has been together before. Um, uh, they have had success before, and it's a good job that they've actually paired them with even more talent. So great job recruiting on Amcal, and yeah, solid pick to try and make an upset run. My first underdog pick, I'm actually going to, I'm blind revealing this because I've forgotten which one I picked first in terms of my actual ordering. So I'm just going to put the graphic up. Oh yes, it's 3D Max. Okay, that's the one I went with first. The 3D Max are the, the most, one of the more annoying teams in the in the tier two scene. They're the kind of team that knocks out your favorite team at every single qualifier. And they never actually make it deep in big events themselves or particularly impress anyone and take that step up. But they're just a nuisance, an absolute nuisance team. And they've been together a long time, got a lot of synergy uh, in between individuals. Uh, obviously, the French team, if you don't know them too well, the players like Haji, Maka, uh, Exercise, who is... I mean, honestly, he's been the first on every conversation for the chopping block, but he's always just somehow stuck around and got slightly better as years go by. Like, he started off pretty weak, high headshots, but kind of baity lurking and not doing much. Supports player in quotation marks sometimes. But he's getting slowly, 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 he's finding his own. And then you've got guys like Joko, who really explosive, like up and down play all over the shop. Like, Joko can win you a game or can throw with like 16 opening deaths in 15 rounds somehow. And then finally... Uh, Lucky, who some will remember from his time at the higher end of the French scene back when there was such a thing. Um, now there isn't, unfortunately, but he's still down here kicking it with these guys. It's an interesting roster, and the kind of roster I think in this specific scenario is just primed to make a little run. They rarely find consistency of long periods of time, but like the four maps I need them to win, or five maps, depending on if they lose one best of three or lose one of their best of ones. I think they're plenty good enough. They've got a little bit of punch and firepower from some of the guys like Haji, like Joko on his up days. And they've got a sort of... It's not super tactical, but they've got enough solutions to problems. I think that's the best way to explain it. To actually make it in a game where they can get a little bit stuck. So really excited to see how this team does. Hopefully it means we'll have a French scene again if these guys can uh, find a way up and maybe start bringing in some young players that I know are lurking in the lower sections of uh, Tier 2 and 3. Um, but first they need to establish themselves as a legitimate team with a good org and some money. So this is a great opportunity for that. Yeah, I, t- I like this team mainly because it's just like it was a cool story to follow for such a long time as there were no real contender teams or even really challenging Tier 2 into into tier one ish French teams for such a long time, but they're quite compelling to watch. I think for me, I mean, they only recently joined 3D Max. So one, 3D Max want to have their stickers back in the game. I know, I know course, fans would yeah. be very pleased to have that as well. You know, this is a re entry into Counter Strike 2. That's the objective for the organization as well, because I, I don't know if that they're still in Valorant. I don't think they are. I think their team got acquired. Um, so for them, this is the primary objective, and that's the expectation set on these guys as well. You know, they missed out on the Paris major, but the first CS2 major would be a good place to start. Um, for me, this team is so hot and cold. Like, they'll come in with an incredibly pacey, well-put-together, very cohesive, like, T-sides. There are some nice organized CT-side openings as well at the start of games sometimes. And then you'll see other games where it looks like People aren't even talking to each other, so I, I, I really do. I really do wonder, like, what the like culture is behind the scene, because for me, when you join an organization like 3D Max, that's the one thing that actually is supposed to be fixed first. You need to have good culture, good practice regimen, good understanding of like professionalism, and making that all translate into gameplay, because. I, I see this team start off so blazing hot, and I'm thinking, man, these guys are sick. These guys actually might be like one of the best teams on the rise. And then you'll see other events or other games against lower level opposition where it just looks like I don't even know who these people are anymore. Like, they've got different people behind the nameplates. So, 
they yeah they are a weird team for me to follow because i i want to i want to like them and i do like them but only in, at times <laughs> i feel like they don't help themselves yeah that's a good way to put it that's really a good way to put it and it's it's for those of you who've ever followed french sports this is the most french team ever there's one you know Usually French teams, at least, it's one event to another, where the events last a bit more than a week. But it's the same sort of idea. You'll have moments where the French rugby team play the most glorious, magnificent brand of just magical rugby. And then by week seven of the event, they've gone back to uh, throwing passes over each other's heads, getting sent off, and losing games to nobodies. That's kind of that's the, the, heat, the uh, 3D Max experience. Uh, I was about to call them by one of their old names there. They're going to be uh, either brilliant or terrible and hopefully i'm gambling they're going to be brilliant this event it's been a while since i've seen much from them i feel like it's their time to show up and uh yeah upset the uh the bookies but let's round out final uh underdog for yourself yumi right i mean this might just be because i was so confident in my other picks i was like phase lock in vp lock in amcal probably the, the best team aside from maybe 3d max in the underdogs yeah, why not? And maybe I'm caught my own hubris, but I've gone with Into the Breach. And it's a little strange, even by my even by my metrics, usually. I don't care. I'll just say it's a little biased. Like, I'm just, you know, I'd be happy to see Thomas on a stage like that again. You know, God save the king. I'm sure he'd love to slide another one of those in. They've, this team is surprisingly, like, when they re-added Thomas, it was just to get the RMR close, like, RMR spot. And to be honest, I thought they'd just be terrible as as soon as they added him. But to be honest, they've actually had some pretty legit wins, which has I think come as a kind of a, a weird surprise to me because Crucial is finding you know a lot of impact. I think Masuta has been pulling his weights quite heavily as well. You know, before I think before Thomas joined, I think it was mainly Bemis and Rollin that I would look to to like really win games. But Masuta's been doing well. I can't pretend like I've watched a ton of Into the Breach Counter-Strike, but I think, you know, just from like a numbers and results point of view, this team is weirdly not not bad, and I'm, I'm all the happier for it. I'd love to see UK organization, UK man, back on the stage. You know, Mezzi, he has all the limelight winning trophies, whatever, with Vitality. Thomas, they had to pull him back out from the bench or back out from retirement, get him back in here to get some sticker money. Yeah, I am. Um, I saw this pick and I was like, "Oof, do we do we know the same into the breach roster?" Like, I'm I've not been a big fan of. Like, I did I did toy with stealing your uh, stealing one of your underdog picks. I decided to write. Really? I thought I knew I knew where you were gonna really? go with it, and I was like, I could do it, but I also don't want to make that argument either. So, yeah, and you know me, I I'm always gonna make the uh, the terrible arguments. But let's start with this because. I have actually, unfortunately, watched a few Into the Breach games recently. Some 9am starts against Bleed, I believe one of them was. Uh, it's not pretty, but they do have win conditions. Uh, Bimas is undeniably mechanically gifted. He's not all-time great elite like we've seen You know, guys like Boros rise up, Donk most notably. Uh, but he's, he's clearly got you know, solid wrists on him. But he has to be, I think at his best theoretical like level for them to win games. When they have been playing recently, and I've seen them win their matches, it has been BMAS at, actually at the top. Misuta has carried his weight, you're right about that, but it's it's really a BMAS win condition. I don't have much faith in Crucial. Uh, he has Anyone who has had faith in Crucial has been rarely repaid, and when he has repaid them, they haven't shut up about it for six months. So in that sense, I don't have much hope for that. Rollin, I think, can be a good player. And Thomas coming back in just to uh, to get them the slot is an interesting one, but all in all, I do think this is a bit of a weak team for this for this. I think this. I'm going to look at the list again, but I'm. Mm, I'd say they're a coin flip with Enterprise. Yeah, they really are for like the the weakest team here. And uh, I'm going to be honest, it's hard to pick against a Polish five stack right now after what we've seen uh, from the Katowice playing and main event. So it might have to be uh, it might have to be into the breach, but no. If BMAS shows up playing his best stuff, Crucial has his you know one time a year that he impresses his believers, and they never talk about anything else again. Um, it could be their it could be their event, but I really doubt it. I don't think there's enough of a game changer on this roster unless BMAS 
plays the very best Counter Strike I've ever seen him play. I yeah, think that's the, not... the big question mark. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I knew, first off, I was probably not picking one of the stronger teams here. You know, if I had to if I had to change my pick, you know, I think Saw and Koi and Fnatic, they're all very, they're all relatively compelling. There's always, like, an argument to be made yeah. for some of these guys. Saw and Koi um, especially, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think the, the Iberian scene is looking strong at the minute. You know, some Pius mm. is, I think, raising a flag and everyone's like, actually, you know what, that, I want some of that too. Mm. But Into the Breach, I just, I, I would just love it for them to make it so i was i just i fuck it i just went for it this this is a totally non-analytical -analy decision every other pick i'm more confident in this is the only one where i'm like eh i'll feed it to the wolves a bit all right well speaking of non-analytical decisions i am constantly making them uh just to ask anyone who knows what i get up to in the on the weekends uh, i just make terrible choices and here's one of them i've made this terrible choice before and god damn it i'm gonna do it again I am picking as an underdog, ninjas in goddamn pajamas. Here we go. The team you yeah, you, you hinted you were going to steal them. You also reacted to my pick in Discord with a throw up emoji. So I was pretty uh, <laughs> I was pretty surprised when you said you were toying with picking them. But it was probably just to fuck with me. It wasn't a yeah. serious pick. Look, let's be honest. They've looked pretty shite this year, and that's being polite. But. This is an underdog pick in an event with, what, nine legit tier two rosters, not even vaguely tier one teams. God damn it, how do you not win at this one? Like, this has got to be <laughs> the event where you guys look your strongest. Like, sure, there isn't much precedent to this. Uh, the Chengdu Open Qualifier, they lost to 500. Uh, Plus Premier Spring Groups, yeah, they beat Complexity, but they did lose twice to G2, and it didn't look really close at any given moment. So there's not much to reinforce your faith, but you've got to believe, man. You've got to believe. That's the thing. Like When you look at a player like Config and the peaks he's had in the past, you look at Hedrick's talent, Alex's like pedigree as a caller. I mean, sure, if the rate this is going, he might have to just make a return to the Iberian scene, which would just be a better scenario than being an IP. But if he can figure it out, he's got enough talent on this roster to easily clear this group they can make it to the stickers they just need to wake the hell up because there's enough talent on the roster it's not a talent issue i don't think it's a long-term calling issue i think they've just taken a lot of time to adjust and to wake the hell up so i'm still picking an ip this time they're gonna i'm looking straight into the camera just pointing out like you're gonna do it this time you're gonna wake up you're gonna get me some points i believe in you Please. okay well, NIP has been a weird team to follow for the past few years because they either had an incomplete roster, a roster that was almost complete, a roster that lasted about three months, or this. Now, I guess. Like, how... Who, are there NIP fans? Who Who is an NIP fan? I know Swedish you might people. be... Swedish like, people. I'm you not might actually be an NIP fan. I'm just picking them because I picked them once and I'm committed to the bit. I'm just stuck. I, th I, think, I think Swedish fans will probably just be following Meta's sport and just hoping some of those guys oh, go a through. a lot of them are slowly falling off into the tier two like teams. Like Alliance has a lot of fans. Uh, Godsense yeah. picking up fans. Meta's sport have picked up a lot of fans as well. Especially of late, they've actually been winning some good series. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, they knocked out Furia quite famous, funnily enough yesterday. So but they're losing fans. I think legitimately, NIP, if they don't do well at this major, or at th if they don't make it out of the RMRs, if they don't do decently at ESL Pro League, if they show no changes, no growth, no anything, this team, like, we like to laugh at EG and go, ha, ah, super mismanaged, r totally ridiculous, they shouldn't have been in Tier 1 Counter-Strike because they were just a partner team. Yeah. This would legitimately be a, a team that I think is worse. Like, I, I think in terms of organizational management or in terms of expectations versus versus the caliber of players that you've been pulling in and out of this roster, how have, how have we not seen basically anything out of NIP? The broken NIP where they're constantly rotating fifths looked better than the, 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 the version we've seen in the past nine months. Mm. You know, that, that to me is staggering. Yeah. So... I, I just don't know what's going on. I, I think this would be a greater failing than, than Evil Geniuses if it just continues to, to sort of build this way. Because you've got a large pool of talent you can pull from. You can do North America, you can do every basically everybody in Europe. 
there's there's no limitations. You know, the, even the Asian players are starting to learn English with them importing European <laughs> players and doing more interviews. Like yeah. you have the whole scope of the world to choose from when you're when you're a European organization and NIP have the resources if they're still holding on to stars like they are. So make make the calls, you know. You you may have signed some players that you think are legitimately good and things aren't working out like how if nothing changes, DJL has to make decisions or whoever is in charge of this, this Counter-Strike division needs to needs to force their hand because it's sad to look at. Like when I'm watching Config Res head trick get bodied game after game, when I think all these guys are like legitimately talented, I think as a tag is legitimately talented as well, but is, you know, more of a uh, a handyman's tool or like a Swiss Army knife kind of player that you just kind of give more bitch rolls than anything, but he'll do them well. Um, you know, I think this team has a lot of very good p potential. It just, it's, it can't, it, this can't be the end of their careers. Like, I look at this team and I think it is like legitimately career ending. Like, who would, I don't know who would take a risk on Config or Rez afterwards. Maybe Hedrick. Hedrick's a little younger and a little yeah, bit more young, forced into the op role. He's still got some, yeah. uh, some excuses to toy with, yeah. But there's so many players. Like, maybe Alex can go back to the Iberian scene, but there's, I just think it feels so dead end on this team. It does, and you might you might very well be right because the failings as a management like team or as a overall structure are going to become shockingly apparent when there's probably legitimately two squads of full Swedish players. You can make a former like academy players from there that are going to be better than this main team. And if, if it stays like this in six months' time, you can easily say that. In between guys like Nilo, guys like Maxter, guys like ZTR, Linus, they're all going off and playing on teams and looking far better than they ever did here. So I think that, yeah, NIP, if they, if this roster itself doesn't figure itself out, it's not just uh, Jonas Gunderson who has to go, who just recently actually did leave. Thank the heavens. It's going to be a lot more people. Uh, so I've still got belief in the talent on the roster. I've still got belief in their ability to salvage this. Hopefully, a lot of these teams play at the same level complexity do. Uh, and then <laughs> my pick's got a chance of making points. Listen, it's not like I'm saying, uh, like, G2, for example, you know, also has a lot of, like, star caliber players, and, you know, struggling some places. They're still making it to playoffs. You know, that it, they've also not been like this for, like, basically three years. <laughs> so it's, it's not like I'm just picking on NIP here because this current version doesn't look great, right? It's just... Oh, yeah, it's, it's been sad. It's organic for a while. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. Um, I wanted to actually quickly, briefly talk about a team that we didn't pick as an underdog. Who maybe some would have expected us to, um, and that's Fnatic, because there's some names on this team, and we we all kind of got a little well, not everyone, but guys like me got a little bit excited when I saw the changes they made. You know, taking some gambles on some pretty unknown talents, but guys who I'd you know definitely I've literally scouted. Um, put in videos like real uh, up and comers, mm -hmm. and so far, well, the fact that neither one has picked have picked them, it's been pr it makes it pretty obvious. It's been pretty miserable for them. They haven't really been very successful. They also went out in the group stage of the like blast qualifier thing where Fury got knocked out in embarrassing fashion. Um, it's not been a great time for them. They struggled to make it here, to be honest, and they didn't make it through Chengdu. So I want to see if you have any takes on this, because for me, I think there's real talent on the team with guys like Matisse and QB, but all in all, they just haven't been able to put, put it together. So do you have any uh, insights onto what you've seen, if you've actually been able to watch them play? Uh, I've, I've only caught, I think, one... I've only caught, like, one best of one from them, and it was, an, and it was a big, pretty big loss, I think, to Incilio, which yep. was, a, again, a team that you should not be losing to um, when, you're, when you're looking at the organizational history and what the players should probably be able to do. I think it's weird because nobody is going to be comfortable on this. Like QB is probably going to be the most comfortable because I think QB came from Sangal, if I remember correctly. He did. Yeah. That's an uh, international team. What? Afro body kind of first real swing at it. Um, I know Afro's had a bit had a bit of time as as his body. Crims. Like nobody is com communicating in the mother tongue. Nobody is also playing the same version of Counter Strike as each other. So I just yeah, 
this team feels like it needs a lot of help. And I don't know that, you know, going into the RMRs, they're basically going to have that. So, mm. I yeah. don't know. I, I also don't even know who I look to to, like, win rounds in weird situations. Like, Crims, Crims will lock down a bomb site, but I don't think, for, for me, he wins a lot of late game or late round situations. You'll have maybe like one every five series. Yeah, it's really it's meant to be QB. He's supposed to come in here as a closer, like realistically. That was kind of his role on Sangal. It's you know, on a team like that, the roles are always hard to truly lock down. But after enough, you know, study, I could pretty much comfortably tell you he is supposed to be the one who if you need a clutch, you're mm. supposed to look to him. If you need a late round double, you look to him. He just hasn't been able to provide it. I mean, Matisse is supposed to be the you know the battering ram on the front end, yeah. QB closing on the back end. It just hasn't really worked out. I mean, they do. Like, the numbers look fine when you just think about them without context. Uh, for for Matisse especially, but when you consider who they've played and the lack of wins, all of a sudden it's worthless. Like it doesn't mean much if you can't even beat uh, the tier two bottom feeders at times. So yeah, I think there's a there's so much to figure out, so much to put together. Maybe this is too big an undertaking for Keita to try and smash together when he's not working with someone he's worked with before as like an IGL. You know, maybe it's just too much of a process for them to all get on the same page. I'm not sure what it is exactly, but I do know for sure that it's just not working. And that's why I couldn't pick him as much as I'd love to. And you clearly just didn't feel like you could, so... Uh, yeah, I just I don't feel like I know enough about this team or have enough... I don't even have a, really like an angle where I can try and justify it. Um... I just yeah i don't i don't see the strength like i could have i i feel like i could more e feasibly have picked a nine pandas here if they weren't considered a favorite by our yeah like ranking the division um or eternal fire or soul yeah i just feel like i had some i actually had like so many legitimate alternatives i could have even made a, a an argument for enterprise more so than than fanatic in this one so mm. it's weird yeah. that's, uh, not, that's not crazy yeah Unlucky. NIP and Fnatic have been on Fraud Watch for some time. <laughs> as an organization. Not even, maybe, yeah. not even maybe not even Fraud Watch. I don't know how, what, to, what to categorize them as, because it's not like people thought of them as great, and then, and then they're failing. It's that they've been so bad for so long that everything else... It's not, I guess we're not even disappointed anymore. No, we just know they're mid as hell, and that's a generous mid like they're just not good and we've come so resolutely like accepting uh, like back in the day like when it first started happening Dude, we were like, legendary this is, this organizations is fanatic bro like these guys are supposed to be the best organizations instead we found out they basically got lucky uh, signed the right players at the right time when players are cheap and you didn't need real investment real structure or understanding of what the hell you're doing you just kind of have a if you have the best team you're winning <laughs> and that's what they stumbled upon at the time um, pretty much unintentionally and now they can't seem to replicate that magic then um, if you're looking at Fnatic, it does feel like for the last 18 months they've just been making signings almost at random and hoping something works out and it really hasn't so hopefully we can see a return to glory for both of these teams i doubt it'll happen for Fnatic here i think there's a tiny chance uh nip start looking stronger at this event and building from here but no it's not pretty the old legends yet to make it back to the top hopefully it gets better, but that's that's our that's our show. That's the Copenhagen Major EU RMR A preview. I think yeah, it's going to be an interesting one to watch. I think RMR B as well. When we do that preview, it'll be a lot to talk about. But I'm glad we managed to get this wrapped up in under an hour because this is my second recording of the day. And then after this, I do have that watch party, which will have already finished by the time this video comes out. That's so well in my life because I will be so dead. It's time to make a big peppermint tea, a lot of honey, and try to recover. So... Yumi, thank you for joining me. I'll see you later. And <laughs> everyone who's tuned in, I appreciate you. Leave a comment telling me your thoughts. And yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.